Let's see, he's part two, man. Right. <clears throat> I'm trying to film Rose at, man. Okay, yeah, okay. So, um, in Lamb versus Lamb, um, Rule 11 sanctions upheld where mother obtained an ex parte custody order based on the allegations found to be or to have no basis in fact. <clears throat> in the ex parte affidavit, in this case, the plaintiff makes several false allegations against father and mother. Plaintiff claims he has cared for the um, has cared for the past six years for the child with no help from the mother or father. Father will use the plaintiff's testimony from August the 10th, 2020 transcripts T1 and 2007 tra um, affidavit and the, two, um, the February 9th, 2021 transcripts T1, T2, and then the affidavit, the affidavit. Anyway, so um, T1, page 3. Yeah. It says, um, the lawyer asked, you've taken the child, you've taken care of the child for six or seven years, right? And the plaintiff, Bruce, answers, he's been with me, yes, sir. Now, on the second um, hearing, the permanent hearing on TWT2, page four and five, how long has the child lived with you? The plaintiff answers, for the last two years. The plaintiff fails to mention the fact that the father, also lived at the plaintiff's home for the last two years with the child and was consistent with responsibilities toward the, toward the, toward the child's needs and cares. Statements made by a plaintiff on T1 and T2 are contradictory to each other and indicates plaintiff committed perjury on his sworn ex parte affidavit. Um, T1, page 3, it says, the attorney asks, how long has it been since we've seen the child's mom? Plaintiff answers, it's probably been a month and a half or two months, two months since she's been by or come by. All right, T2, page 5. Has the mother had any contact with the child in the last couple of years? The plaintiff answers, lately, yes, sir. It may have been less than a month ago, and she bought him a brand new pair of shoes, very nice pair of shoes, a pair of Jordans. I put that in. The plaintiff's testimony on T1 and T2 contradicts sworn statements made by a plaintiff on the ex parte custody order. Father points to the fact that the statement from temporary custody hearing held on August 10, 2020 was only two weeks after the plaintiff's ex parte custody affidavit. This clearly shows plaintiff perjured himself when he gave the statement mother had not had any contact provided any comfort or care or support to the child in over two years. The fact of the matter is the mother has contributed equally to the child's needs and wants. On T2, I don't know. Oh, hell, man. My bad, y'all. Come on now. Okay. Plaintiff's testimony contradicts sworn statements by the plaintiff on the ex parte custody order. Father posted the fact, blah, 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 blah. This clearly shows plaintiff perjured himself when he gave the statement. Mother had not had any contact, provided any care or comfort. And the mother, as a matter of fact, the mother contributed equally to the child's needs and wants. Okay, now T2, page 6. Has the mother, other than buying the child a pair of shoes, provided you any money to take care of the child? Plaintiff answers. Other than buying a pair of shoes? No. Plaintiff answers. Man, my bad. The only thing she gave me was food stamps. But I've had them change into my name other than the shoes. And how long ago was that? Plaintiff answers, it's been about four or five months ago now. Because she gave it to you one time, the card, mother turned the food stamps over to you, right? Plaintiff answers, she turned the card, yeah. Plaintiff once again has committed perjury, misleading the trial court to believe the mother 
gave the plaintiff her and the child's EBT card only one time to use before plaintiff had card switched over into his name. Fact is, plaintiff was given the EBT card the day minor child and father moved into the plaintiff's home. Plaintiff was in possession of the EBT card for 26 months and spent approximately $9,250. On groceries to pay for the child's food, so the plaintiff would not have to spend money on the child's food. <clears throat> what? Okay. Once again, the plaintiff has committed perjury, and Attorney Lucas knowingly allowed for all the false statements given by plaintiff to be entered as evidence in favor of Attorney Lucas's client, the plaintiff, Bruce Acott. This is fraud, and this is fraud on the court. Uh, T1, page 4, father doesn't have a place to live. Does he? Plaintiff answers, no, sir. Plaintiff's statement is false. Plaintiff knew exactly where the father lived because plaintiff routinely picked up the father from his residence to attend all the baseball games and practices the child participated in after the fact. You know what I mean? This is after I got out. This is when, when he had took custody. He knew where I was at. He knew where I was staying. You know what I mean? He knew. Oh, yeah, he knew. Y'all know that. All right. The father defendant, who is preparing this 60B motion and acting pro se during um, this custody battle, is appalled, angered, and mostly hurt by the actions of the plaintiff. His deceitfulness and fabrication of the truth has misled this trial court. Uh, let's see, that would be T. All right, T1, page 6, transcript 1, page 6. The father has got five other children, doesn't he? Plaintiff, plaintiff answers, yes, sir. The father does have five other children. Um, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, y'all. The father actually has three other children. Okay. Um, at a modification hearing on July the 21st of 2000. 20, the judge, Judge Love told the defendant he would not hear from him and denied defendant's motion to modify custody and visitation. To modify the temporary custody and visitation. Yeah, modify temporary. My bad. 